It's Wednesday morning in Sioux City, Iowa, and a major storm is moving into the region. We call them freight train type storms. You, you get yourself positioned northeast of these storms and you just catch them basically as they go by. Catching storms is something Tim Samaras has been doing for decades. Every summer, tornadoes rip across the American Plain states. By positioning himself in the path of monster storms, Samaras can deploy equipment that measures barometric pressure, humidity, and wind speed. You get out there and you see some of these storms. It's better than any video game that you ever see because you're watching Mother Nature at work and all the associated dynamics. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. But this year, Samaras and his team are expanding their horizons. They're also documenting two other potentially dangerous phenomena of storms, lightning and hail, with a battery of new gadgets. But first, they must find bad weather. Because I think uh, Missouri Valley kind of puts us equal distance to either target. For weeks on end, their convoy crisscrosses a section of the United States known as Tornado Alley. Their vehicles packed with state-of-the-art technology. This is like Grand Central Station in here. Uh, we've got uh, computers in here that are connected on the internet, gives me uh, data on the storm, gives me radar data. Uh, I got obviously cameras in here. I've got communications equipment. I'm a ham radio operator, so I report um, severe storms to the National Weather Service directly. Yeah, it does, it does. This looks pretty impressive. I'm liking the looks of this. They stop when they catch up to bad weather, find a vantage point, and wait to see what develops. That's probably gonna go right there. Maybe. I say that and I'll kill it. <laughs> Perhaps jinxed. These clouds never develop beyond a summer thunderstorm. Oh, nice. The odds are against them. Getting to the right place at the right time is difficult. Only one in five storms they encounter produces a tornado. However, during this chase season, they are also angling for a hailstorm. On top of the lead car is a net for catching hailstones and cameras for recording the velocity of the strike. And there's more. So this thing here is actually a sample of an aircraft company's wing of their new aircraft. And what we're looking for is impact effects of hail on it. These little blocks here are simply impact sensors. When a hailstone hits it, like that, it actually ma measures the magnitude of the hit. Hail causes billions of dollars worth of damage each year, destroying crops, vehicles, and property. By measuring the speed and impact of hailstones, Samaris hopes to discover ways to predict storms or mitigate the damage. There's hardly any data telling us what actual velocities of hailstones are when they fall because the hailstone itself, the shapes are sometimes all the way from smooth to very jagged spikes on them, and we really don't know your average velocity. And then there's light, another destructive force of nature that accompanies these killer storms. It's the leading cause of weather-related death and injury in the United States. And sometimes, even a veteran like Samaras can get too close west, uh, for comfort. Of, uh, all right. Get in here, Carson. I felt the power. I, I was electrified right now. CG is just hitting all around us. We are in, definitely in the strike zone, man. With lightning strikes just a few feet away, Samaras moves the team to safety. This is the safest place to be is right here in this vehicle. Maybe not with a microphone in my lap. <laughs> Lightning strikes in a flash. Far too fast for the human eye or a camera to fully comprehend its path. So Samaras has constructed an ultra high powered camera that can shoot more than 400 times faster than those used to record movies in Hollywood. When he's photographed a strike, Tim slows down the imagery to 10,000 frames a second. Thin fingers of supercharged energy streak down, meeting an upward discharge from the Earth. 
The goal is to capture as much detail as possible. This year, we're actually coming out into the field with a camera that's capable of 1.5 million frames per second. It's all digital, we we, it's all custom built. We're trying to capture what we call the return stroke. I don't want it to affect the mission, let's go. Yep. Samaris is gathering such minute information about megastorms with the hopes we can better predict when and where they will strike next. But right now, it's just kind of a clear spot to kind of look and watch this thing go by. Their power to destroy is awesome, is evidenced when the crew pulls into Manhattan, Kansas, on the heels of a tornado. Cars have been tossed into the air. More than a dozen homes have been flattened. A dazed Ashley Wimsack surveys the damage to her family's home. That was my, my sister just had a baby three weeks ago. That was the baby's room on the left where the car is at. The total damage exceeds millions of dollars, but at least no one has been killed. So Samaras and his crew will continue their research, sometimes driving 25,000 miles in a single season. They are chasing danger, in hopes of making people safer. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs, taking science and exploration into the new millennium.